The coming into uh, the area of Harvest Help has um, transformed this place into a self-sufficient production area. Hello, I'm Edward Sturton and as a foreign correspondent with both the BBC and ITN, I've seen something of the impact of natural disasters, famine and poverty in the developing world. Any reporter will tell you that there are times when they'd like to stop reporting misery and try to do something about it instead. Remarkable results can be achieved when a small group of people are determined to make a difference. Harvest Help, a British development agency, is such a group. Rather than giving endless relief to subsidise the needy, Harvest Help enables local communities to help themselves, always with the goal of a permanent, sustainable improvement. Harvest Help currently runs six projects in Zambia, a country which once flourished on the wealth of its copper industry. Since the collapse of world copper prices in the early 70s, it's been in a state of continual economic decline. Today it remains one of the poorest countries in Africa. Harvest Help's first project began in 1986 on the shore of Lake Kariba in the Gwembe Valley. The valley people, the ones you are seeing now along the lakeshore, they used to live on the banks of the river Zambezi until the time when it was decided that they wanted to put a hydroelectricity power station in Siavonga so then the people had to be resettled. They have uh, lost their uh, traditional villages which they had along the Zambezi and their progress has to change because now people are staying in the along the shoreline which is the hilly and the soils are not very fertile. As a team we felt that the agriculture was the most important uh, thing to do but after having meetings with the people Certain things came up like education and we also went into other services like providing of transport to link the communities with the rest of the world through Siavonga. <laughs> we started operating here at Hamatika in 1987, the Ministry of Health through the district hospital used has a team which used to visit this place before, but wasn't quite regular because of the transport problems they used to have. My baby has been examined and she's quite healthy, so she didn't need any treatment. I'm learning a lot from the health education also. We do health education, we teach the mothers on how to look after themselves and we also weigh the children, monitor the weight of the child, see whether the child is growing or not growing. Not only that, we also have antenatal clinics, postnatal clinics, family planning clinics and cookery demonstrations. We use drama, you know. When we identify some subject which is of need in a, in a community, then we see to it that it's demonstrated through some drama so that the mothers can understand better. We have seen that working quite well, having seen how the mothers have changed their way of living in their homes. We do need more money because the cost of drugs is getting quite high. Not only that, the transport cost is quite high. My son goes to school in the morning from 7 until 12.45. He needs to know how to read and write. He will be a good number. I've been in school for six years. The subjects that we, we learn here are English, maths, social studies, uh, religious education. And I also enjoy uh, games, I especially like playing football. The school was first established in 1987. There are seven schools, five which have been uh, recognized and uh, two which still have not been recognized by the government yet. Their first uh, primary school living examination, they got a 52% pass, which was much better than what most schools in the region got. 
certain it's my hope that I'll go to secondary school. A good number of them have gone to secondary school, but uh, the schools are far from here, and uh, along the lecture we don't have any secondary school. So a basic school would be um, very appropriate. And if you could get support for that kind of thing, we would be very, very grateful. Adult literacy classes are also proving successful. There were some uh, who wanted to, for example, to be able to follow certain instructions like, you know, growing oranges, uh, and they could not read, and so they said, uh, could we help them in uh, starting schools for adults? And uh, a good number of uh, adults attend these classes. Basically, Harvest Help uh, Zambia is a general community development program which caters for all aspects of life. So we are talking about education, building of our primary schools, and conducting primary health care activities and then we also now talk about uh, the actual COP which is the income generating activity done by the community to support the social services in the area. Some of the things which we sell here is salt, then small plates, uh, biscuits, Vaseline, Colgate and washing soap. Before we came in the community had no communication if they needed to get any plow part or seed, they had to go to Mazabuka or into Siavonga, which meant using a dugout canoe, spending nights on the islands. But now, there is a boat service that's going around to the centers. They don't need to, to worry about that. The warehouse is the link between the rest of the world and the corp centers along the lecture. The warehouse is intended to service the community. So what we do here is we get goods from Lusaka, the things that the community would need in the villages. We take them by the aqua boat and deliver them to their doorsteps. Then from there we get the things that they they have there to have a market in Lusaka. So it's a two-way thing. We get the things from Lusaka into the community, then we get other things from the community up to Lusaka where there's market. We help them run it, but it's owned by the community because the community have got shares, they have contributed shares, share capital to run this. In 10 years time, I can imagine having a big Rora mill, oil pressing machine, and a continuous flow of COP members coming in, buying goods, and selling through the warehouse. And I can also imagine uh, this place looking at uh, more income generating activities that will bring in income. The aim of our Gwembe Valley project is to be able to stand on our own feet. While we appreciate the support that's coming in from outside, but we feel that it's right in our own mind that we have to do certain things so that we can be able to be on our own. <laughs>